Thank you, Father. I, I just want to add uh, a word to that. As a vice president and administrator at North Greenville University, we are a, a Baptist university supported by the South Carolina Baptist Convention, and we would have to come under these same mandates. We would have, we would be forced as an education of, of higher learning, uh, education of an institution of higher learning, to come under these mandates and to pay for abortions in our insurance plans. And we're not going to do it, ladies and gentlemen, because yeah. it's not according to the Word of God. In the interest of time, is everybody okay if we don't sing here? We just kind of keep rolling. Yeah. Is that okay? All right, good. We took a vote. It's, Demo it's a constitutional republic. We're okay. <laughs> Let me introduce to you Suzette Jordan. She spent 24 years at Bob Jones University Press. She's currently the constituent services representative in co for Congressman Trey Gowdy's Greenville office. Suzette Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. Congressman Gowdy couldn't be here today because he's flying back from Washington, but I have a letter from him that I'd like to read. To, the, to those in attendance, religious freedom is one of our most deeply held freedoms. We all are guaranteed the right to choose whom or what we worship void of government interference. This sentiment can and must be applied to the debate surrounding the HHS mandate to provide free contraceptives. Though men and women using election year rhetoric have attempted to make this debate about women's health care, this is not the issue at hand. If health care were the issue, then we would have long ago outlawed smoking and mandated the daily taking of vitamins. The issue at hand is protecting the freedoms guaranteed us by the First Amendment. Time and again, the Supreme Court has come down on the side of religious freedom, even if the religion is not widely accepted. These many decisions by the court have established one powerful truth. Government cannot dictate the religious beliefs of its citizenry or impede the free exercise of those beliefs. Thank you all for your continuing support of this very important issue. Please do not hesitate to contact me if there is ever anything I can do for you. It is an honor to serve you all and the 4th Congressional District. Congressman Trey Gowdy. Our next, next speaker this afternoon is Christy Killaw. She is a pediatric and OBGYN registered nurse. She's the mother of six. Please welcome Christy. Thank you all for being here today. I'm really not a public speaker and I'm very humbled to have been asked because I think I just represent the ordinary person in the crowd. Um, my name, as he said, is Christy Killaw. I've been a registered nurse for 24 years. Um, I've worked in every capacity from labor and delivery to geriatric care, so the whole spectrum of life, um, and primarily in hospital care, primarily in pediatrics. And so I, I took a hiatus from my career for about 10 years to raise my own children, and, it won't, and I have just recently gone back, and I'm working again in pediatric care, but this time outpatient. I've been married for 18 years, and my husband and I have been blessed with six boys, and they're all here today. Um, Thank you. We've always welcomed with joy each new life as a gift from God, and we thought we'd have actually many more children than we do have, but found out that God really is in charge when it comes to life. And so after losing many babies to miscarriage, we came to a deeper awareness of just how precious and miraculous the gift of life really is. So in January of 2012, when the Obama administration issued its HHS mandate requiring Catholic hospitals, schools, and services to provide coverage for contraceptives, abortifacient drugs, and sterilizations, we are horrified. For those who understand, you know this isn't simply a discipline that Catholics embrace, sort of like not eating meat on Friday. This is a core belief about what it means to be a human and a child of God. This mandate strikes at the core of our belief as Christians, and is not simply a disagreement with society about contraception, but a deadly blow to what we hold most dear, our belief in God and His natural moral laws the higher laws of our human nature written in the soul of each and every one of us, which for some may have been lulled to sleep by a society that's increasingly devalued what that life and what it means to be human. This mandate was and is a direct assault on our religious liberty. 
Ironically, as, as I'm probably repeating what people have said, but if we go back and read what our founders have said, you know, I invite you to go back and read the Declaration of, of Independence, and I think, especially the second paragraph, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. The HHS mandate is a threat to our liberty for many reasons. First, it coerces the Catholic Church to be complicit in actions that directly violate the fundamental belief that all life is a gift. Second, because it encourages the people of this nation to believe that the government, and not people of goodwill, can direct the actions of the individual, it threatens the conscience of those who would do good and avoid evil. Did you know that who uphold the Hippocratic Oath to above all do no harm? Did you know that part of the original Hippocratic Oath that healthcare professionals took for centuries stated, I will give no deadly medicine to anyone if asked, nor suggest any such counsel. And similarly, I will not give a woman a pessary to cause an abortion. And contraceptives, abortifacient drugs, and sterilizations are deadly. In 2005, the International Agency for Research on Carcinogens declared estrogens and progesterones are class one carcinogens. That means they're cancer-causing agents to humans. There's also evidence that abortions are implicated in the rise of breast cancer, and there's a link between vasectomies and prostate cancer, and the list can go on and on. Recently, Forbes, I don't know if you read it, but they've just put out an article for the last decade. They've been showing that all of these artificial contraceptives have found their way into our drinking water, and they can't get it out. And so we're all being affected by it. And, and they're cancer-causing agents, so where is the evidence that these drugs have any health benefit to women? The government is making empty claims about why they have issued this mandate because healthcare is oriented to preventing and healing disease, and pregnancy is not a disease. Years ago, when I returned to Boston after having worked in a Bush hospital in Alaska, I was determined to pursue my love of labor and delivery nursing. I applied to St. Margaret's in Dorchester because I knew that working in this area could be difficult especially if you were pro-life, and I wanted to be in a hospital that would never perform procedures that would go against my conscience. Incredibly, at a time when other hospitals around Boston had been offering $1,000 sign-on bonuses for nurses, St. Margaret's Labor and Delivery Award had a 10-year waiting list. Why do you think this Catholic hospital in a not-so-great part of Boston had a waiting list for nurses who wanted to work there. I know why I wanted to work there. Catholic hospitals comprise 16% of hospitals nationwide. The U.S. bishops have threatened, and they're not going to back down when it comes to this mandate. When, and I say when, not if, these hospitals close, besides millions of patients being displaced, doctors, nurses, respiratory, physical, and occupational therapists, housekeeping, medical record workers, Many, many, many people will be out of a job. This mandate will further catapult our nation into an ec unemployment and economic disaster. It's irresponsible, foolish, and coercive. Finally, for those of you who might still be confused, or if you know anyone who's still confused about religious liberty and why it needs to be respected, I encourage you all to see For Greater Glory, which is showing right now in theaters. And I think there are handouts somewhere around here, um, Laura said, and I've seen some of my boys were handing them out earlier. It's sort of like Schindler's List because it's a movie that shows a piece of history that sheds so much light on our current political situation you cannot fail to leave with a sense that this is our current struggle. Our whole reason for existence is God. He's our first beginning and our last end, and no one can sit idly by in this struggle. If you are not engaged in the battle to preserve good, then you're on the side that destroys it. Just as you could not be in Nazi Germany and sit idly by without in some way making a statement about your faith, Either you consented to the Nazi regime, even if by silence, or you risked annihilation. And likewise in Mexico, as it'll show in this movie, there's just no middle road. You are either those who fight to preserve religious liberty or trample it. Thank you all for hearing me speak, and God bless you.